Hello and welcome to part 3 of Database Design Made Easy, where we will talk about second normal form. Now, for a table to be in second normal form, it has to obey two requirements. The first is simply that it already has to be in first normal form, which we of course talked about in the previous video. The second requirement to take the table from first to second normal form is that no non-key column can ever depend on a subset of a key. We will illustrate this with an example, uh, but it is important to realize that it says no non-key column. That means that this only applies for columns that are not part of any key. Every column that is included in at least one candidate key can by definition never violate second normal form. Also, in order to depend on a subset of a key, such a subset must exist. We already know that all columns are atomic because the table is in first normal form. So how can a, col a column ever depend on a subset of a key? That can only happen if that key is composite. It has to uh, span at least two columns. So if you have no non-key columns, or if all candidate keys are single column keys, then it is simply impossible to violate second normal form. And as long as you uh, adhere to first normal form, that table is automatically in second normal form. But let's look at an example of a table where second normal form violations are definitely possible. This once more is our conference example where we have sessions and they are scheduled to be taken place in one of the conference rooms, start at a certain time and we are also interested in the maximum capacity of each room so that we don't get into a problem with the fire department for letting too many people into the room. Now, if you look at this table uh, and look at the functional dependencies, you will see that the session by itself is a single column candidate key. Why? Well, because every other column in this table depends on the session column. If you give me the session number, I can give you exactly one room, exactly one start time, and exactly one room capacity. Unless it's a non-existent session, then I can give you no rooms, no start time, and no room capacity. There will never be a single session that takes place in two rooms, starts at two times, or has two different room capacities. There is also another candidate key on room and start time as a combination. Now, why is that? Because the other columns depend on that combination. Give me a combination of room and start time, and I can tell you at most one session that starts at that time in that room. And I can also tell you at most one room capacity that applies. And once more, I say at most one, because it's also possible to give a non-existing room or a, start, a time at which no session starts. However, when we look at these um, functional dependencies, and when you look at the business rules, you will see that one of these functional dependencies is actually a cheater. Yes, the combination of room and start time combined determines the room capacity. If you tell me grant 1245, I can tell you, yes, the room capacity is 228. But this is a cheater because in reality, the room capacity depends on the room only. It doesn't depend on the combination of room and start time. This is the business rule. Now, of course, there may be conference centers where the size of the rooms can be changed. There are removable uh, walls that can be placed at another place to add or remove from the capacity of a room. In our universe of discourse, we are not in such a conference center. At least during the entire duration of the conference, the capacity of each room is constant. It doesn't change. Now, with the table design we have, we have enforced the first five 
f functional dependencies, but we have not sufficiently enforced the sixth one. In the table design on the left, I could change one of the rows. And as you see, now the capacity of the grant room changes during the day from 228 to 250. And I just told you, in our universe of discourse, that is not possible. So our table design does not help us enforce the business rules. And that is because we violate second normal form here. There is one non-key column room capacity that depends on room only which is a subset of a key and it should depend on the whole key so we need to fix this and the way to fix second normal form violations is to simply look at okay what is the actual functional dependency room determines room capacity those columns that are mentioned in this functional dependency, those should be in a table of their own. So we have a table with room and room capacity. And room determines the room capacity. We already established that. Room capacity does not determine the room. Look for instance at rooms 605 and 225, both have a room capacity of 60. So I cannot give you a single room if you give me the room capacity 60. So there is just one candidate key in this table on the room column. And that is fine. This table we can easily see adheres to both first normal form and second normal form. Because we now have these columns in a different table, we no longer need the room capacity in our original table. We still need to store it in our data model, but that's in a different table. And if we need to create a report, then we can join the tables together to create the original report. But we don't store it that way. So we remove the room capacity column from this table. And now it is also in second normal form by sheer virtue of there not being any non-key columns. So the left table is in second normal form because it's in first normal form and every column is a key column. The second table is in second normal form because it is in first normal form and there are no uh, composite keys, so no non-key column can possibly depend on a subset of a key. This is how we've solved the second normal form issue and as you see, the reason we did this is because we now have a database design that better helps us enforce the business rules. Now it is impossible to make a modification in our data that violates the business rule that the room capacity of a room never changes during the conference. And that is what, after all, was the purpose. I already mentioned it and I'm going to call it out again. This depends on the universe of discourse, not because second normal form by itself specifically depends on the universe of discourse, but because the functional dependencies depend on the universe of discourse. If we go to a high-end conference center where the room capacity can change during the day, then our original design would have been correct and not in violation of second normal form, and our second design would have been incorrect because then we cannot store those changes in room capacity. So it does depend on the universe of discourse what the functional dependencies are. Once you have those functional dependencies, then verifying second normal form and solving second normal form violations is almost an automatic process. You basically cannot go wrong if your functional dependencies are identified correctly. Now these requirements apply to the table. Second normal form, like first normal form, is always checked at the table level. Every individual table must obey those rules, and every table that doesn't obey these rules is not in second normal form. If you want to talk about your entire data model, then you can say that your data model is in second normal form if every table in it is in at least second normal form.
if you have 100 tables and 99 are in second normal form or better, and just one is in first normal form, then your data model is still in first normal form. Your data model is only in second normal form if all tables are in second normal form or better. And that's basically all. Second normal form is not that complex. This is all you need to know to take your table from first to second normal form. Now, of course, you also want to go to third normal form. And that is the topic for the next video, which I hope to release end of January 2024. Until then, if you want to peek ahead, you can already look at my Pluralsight course. The link is on the slide, but will also be in the description below the video. A long course with almost eight hours of in-depth coverage, including a step-by-step -step method to find all functional dependencies in a very reliable way. Or if you don't want to watch that course, you can wait until late January and then I will tell you about third normal form and then after that there will be much more. Anyway, that's all I have. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment. I thank you for your attention. My name is Hugo Cornelis. Goodbye.